All right, for this first example, uh, I'm going to solve this equation. The, the main idea here is to get the variables to one side and the numbers to the other. Um, in this case, we have a fraction, so I'll get rid of the, the fraction at the very beginning. Um, the numbers will get kind of big, but if you don't want to deal with the fractions, then it's something that you can do. Um, so, first thing I see is there's the denominators of 9, and I think to myself, uh, what's a common, den well, actually, 9 is the common denominator here, so I can multiply everything by that common denominator, that's the first step, multiply everything by the common denominator of 9, and I'm going to distribute that to all of my, it looks like, four terms here. And just remember, 9 times 2 over 9. How do you multiply fractions? Well, 9 is the same thing as 9 over 1. And I could just multiply. I get 18 over 9 and then reduce that. Or I can cross-cancel. Um, I mean, you have the same thing on the top and on the bottom. They cancel out uh, to 1. So 9 over 9 is just 1. 2 times 1. So this would be 1 uh, over 1 times 2 over 1. I'm over explaining this, but this is just to remind everyone. So this is just 1 times 2, that's just 2. So I have uh, 2n, and then 9 times negative 31, remember positive times a negative is a negative, so I'll have a negative, and that equals 279, uh, 279. Uh, 16, so I have to do the 9 times the 16. So what is that? That's 144. And then plus, again, I would do the same thing, 9 times the 7 over 9. So that's 9 times 7 over 9. Remember, you put a 1 there, cross cancel. Um, what do we have? Well, just 7, right? That's the whole point of doing that. We don't have any more fractions. So 7, and we need the n to stay there, we need that n to stay there. Now, we get to the heart of the problem, which is to get the variables to one side and the, the, the numbers to the other. And it doesn't really matter which way you go. Um, I see that the 7n is bigger. So if I, remember, you have to do the opposite when you're um, getting stuff to either side. I, you, I could subtract 7n and get the letters to the left, numbers to the right. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, since the 7 is bigger, if I subtracted it over here, I would get a negative n value, or sorry, a negative um, coefficient for n. So what I'm going to do is I'll subtract the 2n minus the 2n. So that goes away. And I have 7 uh, minus 2, right? 7n minus 2. 7, 6, 5, that's 5n. And it's positive because the 7 is bigger. Schweet, 144 equals. And then I have, don't forget this negative. Lots of people are going to forget that, I feel like. Uh, negative 279. Well, I got my numbers, or sorry, my letters, my variables, to the right side. So that must mean I need to move my uh, numbers to the left. I got my variables to the right, so I need to move my numbers to the left. And I do that by doing the opposite. So I'll, it's already a positive 144. I subtract 144. Uh, what do I get? Uh, actually, since they're both negative here, I'm going to add these two together. And I get 423. Uh, and it's negative. And that goes away and equals 5. And this is not going to come out evenly. But the last step is to divide by the number in front of the variable. So it cancels out to 1 or but we don't have to write the 1. And so we just get um, negative 4. I mean, this doesn't reduce, so this is the answer. Negative 423 over 5 equals n. And there you have it. Um, so letters to one side, numbers to the other. That's, that's what you got to remember here. That's how to solve any linear equation um, with a single variable. So... Uh, dash all, dash all, here we go, dash goodbye.